Hey guys, what are you doing over there? Thank you for being here. It's tea time once again. Probably like, what, 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 is this, what is this camera angle? I know it's not that great, but I wanted to show you the back end setup of what I do here. It doesn't matter if it's streaming on YouTube or on Twitch or on Facebook. It doesn't matter what it is. You can do it with this setup without a problem. And I wanted to show it to you. You guys asked me about this, so here it is. So I'm gonna give you this little bit of a behind the scenes tour of how I do it and what the process is and what is the equipment that we use and whatnot. And hopefully it answers some of your questions that you've been asking. Um, the last uh, live stream that we did, um, we were live streaming right out of Iran, which was amazing. We had an incredible guest from Iran that turned out awesome, absolutely awesome. And then the live stream before that, we were um, live streaming with a guy that is a astrophotography nut. He is a, he's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And if you wanna learn anything about astrophotography, take a look at that live stream. It's like two hours or two and a half hours, just chock full of amazing content. I mean, just stuff, anything that you need to know about getting started into astrophotography, go check that out. Anyway, so this is the setup that we do on a daily, all right? Normally, this is the main camera and this would be the secondary. I just switched them up today um, just to do it, just to change it up a little bit, just to see the difference. Um, so this right here you're seeing is a Sony ZV-1. And on this side, we have the Canon 80D. So they're both connected into OBS. And this is kind of my command station, right? It has all of the stuff that I need and it is directly linked into my tablet. Now, there's a lot of streamers out there that absolutely love Elgato uh, stream decks, right? And I think that they're fantastic. I think they're overpriced for what they do. So what I did is I picked up a piece of software um, called Touch Portal, I believe. Yeah, Touch Portal. And it allows me to use a small iPad like this that's no longer being used, or I could use my large, like almost 13 inch iPad. And this is what it looks like. You see that, guys? Not bad. Let me flip it around. Maybe for this camera, it'll be better. Let's see. As long as my eyes aren't in there, then we won't have a problem. Anyways, this is what it looks like. And you can customize this for anything that you want. And that's the whole purpose behind this, all right? It's just customization. You could do the exact same thing with the Elgato, but the Elgato, like I said, is pricey, number one. Number two, to get a large one like this, it is very hard to get because Everyone is at home and they're looking for some kind of streaming solution and Elgato is what everyone says you must have. You know, I'm never going down the beaten path of everyone else, all right? So the same thing when it comes to Adobe with my Adobe Cutting the Cord series that we're going to revamp here um, for 2021. So if you haven't seen my last video, go check that out. Anyways, back into this, I just wanna show you what this looks like. now. On my screen, it doesn't look like this normally. It's This is normally smaller, like this. And what I could do is I could just push it over to the side and either put it over to a secondary screen over here where you can see Cortana. I absolutely love Cortana. The last video that I did, you'll notice that on this monitor over here, we had a really beautiful picture of Japan. Why? Because we were talking about Nikon and Nikon basically shutting down two of their plants out of three. So we had a nice picture over here. And normally the picture here will match the picture back there. All right, guys, I wanna break into this video for one moment, all right? We'll continue in just a second. But the whole reason I'm doing this is to show you the good, the bad, the ugly, and whatnot. And while I was editing the video, I noticed something, and you're gonna notice it as soon as I tell you. Um, later on the video, I'm gonna talk about what cameras I'm using. Right now, this is a Sony ZV-1 for a main, and then the secondary is a Canon 80D. Now, just for some reference, I ended up going with the Sony because it was a really good value. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But I could have went with another 80D or a 90D. But what I found was the eye tracking on this camera is like second to none. It finds me all the time. It doesn't matter if I look away and then I look back. As soon as I look back, it's immediately on my eyes. Now, the 80D, 
while dual pixel AF is fantastic, it doesn't work as well. And this is a perfect example of it. And I wanna show you. So let's jump into my screen real quick. And as you can see here, I am editing this video. Now this is the first time that it shows up where I flip over to the ADD and you'll be able to see it. Let me just play this. So we had a nice picture over here. And normally the picture here will match the pic. So you see what's going on here? As you can tell, I am out of focus here. Why is that? Well, because I looked away and what Canon does is it finds another face. And the face that it's finding is Cortana behind me, <laughs> okay? So instead of snapping back to me, like what the Sony will do, because Sony, the way it works, is it has to do with depth as well as eyes. So if I turn to the side, it'll immediately look and snap onto this eye because it's closer, where if I turn to this side, it'll snap onto this one, and I can see it in the monitor doing it. Okay, whereas the Canon 80D, obviously it's older, it doesn't, nor does the 90D. That depth is just not there. Does it snap onto eyes? Absolutely. But a perfect example is here, I am blurry and Cortana is perfectly clear. Now this happens throughout the video. Now, where it changes is I'm gonna later on show you this. And once I bring this up onto the screen, it will snap onto this, and then later on, it will go and snap back onto my eyes. So it's kind of like it does it when it wants to do it. I've actually had an entire video or a few videos that I ended up having to chuck and redo it because on my back screen, I had a face, okay? And the Canon 80D wants to snap to a face. So if I look away, it'll snap to the face and then forget to snap back to me. It's a big problem. So I wanted to break in here to tell you what's going on and you'll see it throughout the rest of the video. So it's just something to think about when you're purchasing cameras, which camera is the better camera for you. For me, this was the better value, the Sony ZV-1 in comparison to getting a secondary 80D or even a 90D. So anyways, let's get back into the video. So, or some type of continuity. So anyways, this is what I do when we start out and I will be recording here through OBS. I'll move this to the side. Now I could also move it over to this monitor over here. So it's out of the way. Um, but if I want to just go live with just myself, all right, we see just the large picture of me in this window. Now, if I wanna do, let's say, a guest window where there's me and the guest, I could just hit guest and it'll change this whole view. So now it's me on one side. Obviously, you can see the name of the last person that was here. And underneath that would be a highlighted comment, let's say, that I want to address. And I'll highlight that. And then on the left-hand side, there is a window where all of the chats are running all the time. So this makes it really nice for live streaming because now everyone is seeing what they're writing at all times and what everyone else is writing on my screen as well as on their own. And this gets baked in, so it's there forever, okay? So even if you don't look at the comments or if you don't look at the chat window that's in the video itself, um, it's going to be on the video, baked in, like I said. So this is the kind of window that I've set up. Now, if it's just solo and it's just me, I can switch this out just by touching one button, and now it is me, and then I still have the chat and the highlighted chat. If I wanna go split screen, I can do that, and that moves everything over, so now I'm more of a portrait type of setup, and you have your chat and your chat highlight also. Um, this works out really good for and extending this area, I can change this up if I need to. Um, if I wanna share my screen, I can do that also. So let's go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. And if I hit desktop here, this is the screen. Matter of fact, let's jump into Amazon real quick. Let's see, Elgato uh, Stream Deck, uh, let's see, XL, that would be the larger one. So. This is the Stream Deck XL. It has 32 customizable keys. And as you can see here, it's literally about the same size as this. It's not that much bigger. Um, and 
it is not available. I can't pick it up if I wanted to through Prime. Let's go ahead and see how much those are. And there you go. So you're looking anywhere from about $335 to about $450, $580, $590 plus $40 freight. This is what happens. Whenever there is something that is sought after, these trolls will go in there and buy them all up and then sell them at some ridiculous prices. And it's a horrible thing, but that's the way it is. Now, if you did just want the 15 key, it looks like you can still get it here at 149. And then the six key, I'm not sure why you would want six keys. Uh, it's really, really small. I'm not sure, they don't even have a price in here. It's probably gonna be like 99 bucks, $79, somewhere right on there, but it isn't even available. And once again, that's what ends up happening. So this is how I would show my screen if I needed to. And what's nice about this, if I go back to me, so now it's the full screen of myself. I'm gonna enlarge this just so you can see it. I could, let's say I was talking to you about my Dark Moon Tees. I could just click one button and then at the bottom, you'll see the lower third will pop up. So what that does is allows me to bake it in and not have to do it after the fact. Hence, it speeds up the process in editing. So if I'm live, I can do it, which works out good. Let's say I said, you know what, let's go over to my Discord. I can just simply hit a button and boom, it says community.jchristina.com in the lower thirds. Very, very simple. And this is what I was looking to do when I was thinking about getting the Elgato Stream Deck. Because having everything at just a simple touch um, makes it a lot easier than coming in here and then clicking on different things as you could do through OBS. But you just don't wanna do that. You wanna have some type of system like this. You can just push on things and it's very, very easy. I wanna say subscribe, boom, the subscribe button pops up. If I wanna show any of my products, for example, I can bring up my products also and then just select whichever one I want. Let's say it's the Aurora, camera care kit, right? The full um, frame sensor cleaner, right? And there you go, we pop it up, I can click it again, it disappears. I could do the same thing with, let's say the microfiber that I sell, um, whatever it is, or maybe even my ebook, bring up the ebook to see what that looks like or whatever. And this is once again, a all encompassing system, but guys, and this is where there's a big but, there is a lot of work a ton of setup, a lot of work in getting this to work properly, all right? There's a lot that goes into it. Now, this Touch Portal software, all right, runs on your system at the same time. Matter of fact, I'll bring that up. Maybe you can see it here. There it is. Now, if I bring up the screen that is associated with this, as you can see, this is identical to that. So if I come over here and move my head here up one, if you look over here on the actual unit itself, it moved up. You see it right here, the button moved. If I go ahead and move it down, you'll see that it'll immediately happen over here. So it's connected. Now you see there's a cable here. Now this cable is only for power. This is wirelessly set up. So. What I like about this, what I think is really cool, is some new things or some new thoughts about the channel um, I'm kind of kicking around in my head, is can you see right there, maybe right there, you see that? It says Time Machine. That is a retro arcade stand-up machine that my son and I built. And what I was thinking about doing is having a live feed possibly over there and playing some video games um, and allowing you guys to select whatever video games you want to play. Now you're like, well, what video games do you have? The thing is that retro arcade, the ROM that's in there has, or the multiple ROMs that are in there, um, the SSD has over, I think it's 15,000 retro games. I mean, anything that you can think of, Pong, all right? It doesn't matter what it is. It is on there, Space Invaders, right? Galaga, whatever it is, they're all there. So I can jump in there and play any of them. So now I won't know how to play a lot of them, but maybe you guys can give me some tips in the uh, chat window. So what's cool is I can bring this, like I was saying before, being completely wireless, I can bring this over to that station over there, to the um, retro arcade and set it up over there and still be able to stream live and make changes or, or move my camera around or whatever I want to do. So that works out really well and that's one of the reasons why I built it like I built it. So 
Anyways, let's just go real quick through the gear that I'm using. Once again, this right here is the Sony ZV-1 that's capturing me. Let's call it the main camera from the side. Right here in the front, the, the side view with this video or the main view coming in straight ahead is the Canon ADD. Now, I love the ADD. I've had it forever. I ended up buying the Sony ZV-1. It just simply made sense. I got an amazing deal on it. I couldn't pass it up. Bottom line, I could not pass it up. So, you know how I am. I'm agnostic, it doesn't matter. I am a Canon shooter, but I will shoot whatever is the right camera, let's say, for the job. And for this one, the ROI, the return on investment, the value, let's call it, this Sony ZV-1 was the answer. Now, as far as audio goes, I have a Samsung um, USB mic over here off frame, or actually you might be able to see it somewhere here. Anyways, that's over here. That I usually only use for um, talking to people through Skype. If I have a client meeting or whatnot, I'll use that sometimes, or I'll use the Rode mic. Right over here, you can see this is a Rode shotgun mic. Now, if you guys want a microphone and can't spend a ton, this is the baby right here. This Rode shotgun mic is absolutely fantastic for what it is, for the price. I think they're about, I wanna say 150 bucks. Let's get back into Amazon. Let's take a look just to see. Rode shotgun. Let's see what it is. All right, the Rode shotgun mic, there it is. They call it now a Rode Video Mic Go. Let me click on that, check this out. All right, so this is basically what I have here. This is a newer model, um, but 99 bucks is the answer. And as you can see, I mean, I'm zooming in on it a little bit. It is really a great, great mic, all right? What's nice about it is you plug it directly into your camera, and you don't need anything else, all right? You turn it on and off you go. It's very directional, highly directional. So you don't get all of that nonsense around you. Wherever it points is where you're going to capture the audio. So that is really good, especially if you're going outside, you don't want all the traffic, you want all the stuff. A shotgun mic is a great option. Of course, you can use a little lavalier mic. I do that too sometimes walking around, but this is a great option. Now. The next mic is this one right here. This is the RE20. The RE20 is a beast. That is a radio mic. I've been using that for over 10 years. Um, it's been on the market for decades and decades and decades. I mean, this is the mic that Rosh Limbaugh uses that's gold plated, all right? It is a radio mic. It sounds like a radio mic. I love um, how my voice sounds on it. Now, everyone's voice sounds differently, mic to mic to mic. So you really want to test out different mics. Anyways, this mic is 499 bucks, call it $500. Then you have to amplify it, right? It needs to have power. So that goes into down here underneath, you can't see it, but this is a DBX. Now the DBX, I think it's a 286, I believe is what it is. That is a compressor. Um, it goes from there, that's another, let's call it two, 300 bucks. All right, so you got 500, uh, now you're at 800. From that, it goes into here. This is a Zoom H4n, as you can see it here. We got a count going down, the reason being is I'm recording everything going on, not only through OBS, but it's also being recorded on Zoom. Um, I do that so that I have redundancy. If something breaks down, I'm gonna have audio somewhere. So we have audio over here on the Sony. We have audio over here on the Canon. We have audio everywhere, all right? But the main audio is going to be this, coming out of that RE20 that goes directly into the Zoom. Um, so the audio sounds the best that it can be. Then, that is the audio, let's say, setup. All right, those are the three uh, mics. You know what the cameras are. Now, if we look around, everything is now set up through one light stand. Now, I could have done it different. I could have had them mounted um, onto the desk itself, but the reason I didn't do that is for mobility. I can take this entire stand with everything attached to it and flip it around and now start recording in the other direction or whatever. All right, it's nice to be able to have that mobility when you're building something, all right? So that's what I do when it comes to this. As far as lighting, we have always three lights on. I have one hair light, which you can't see right above me. We have one light, usually it's like stage left and one stage right, and at different intensities. Why? Because you don't want anything just completely mushed and flat. You want 
some type of structure to three-dimensional items. People don't understand that. Usually they'll get a, they'll start up a stream or whatnot, or they're doing a video and they got like a ton of light blasting on their face and it looks flat. You don't really want that. You want one side of your face a little darker than the other so you can see texturing and whatnot. I'm a little bit older, so I'm gonna have a little bit more texture than probably some of you guys that are in your 20s. So, but it's okay, right? Character is what's important here. You don't wanna just have stuff flat. You're not like a, unless you're a beauty um, person that is working on makeup and you wanna use a ring light and everything is just absolutely perfect, flawless light, you can do that also. I don't really need it for what we're doing here. Now the video that's coming out from that Sony ZV-1 is going into an Elgato. And that Elgato is the, I think it's an HD60, I believe. Let's get back into Amazon because this is important. Um, Elgato uh, HD60. Now this is, I believe, an HD60S. It looks like this. It's about 200 bucks. It allows me to take the clean feed out of the Sony, pipe it into this Elgato, um, this HD60S, and then feed it into the computer. And that's how it's being fed into OBS, all right? It works out really good. Um, Elgato does an amazing job with these type of capture cards as well as capture devices. This one is external, but they also have cards which are internal. Here's a card that is also 60. When you see 60, 60P is what you're getting. So this is the 60S or the 60S Plus. Works out awesome. It's 199 here and it's actually available. I can't even believe it, right? Anyway, so this is how it gets into the system. And then once again, right now is being piped into OBS and OBS is pushing it out to YouTube. Right now we're not live, so it's not pushing it out anywhere, but we can take this feed and send it to Twitch. We can send it to Facebook. We can send it to YouTube Live. We can send it to whatever, a conference call, whatever it is. That's what's really nice about setting this up once, because once it's set up, it's kind of, it's done, right? It's complete. You can now do whatever you want with it and send that data wherever you need it to be. And now I can get people to call in and once again we can switch over to guest setup and then have me and have the guests side by side and have these conversations which I think are awesome. Now we can also bring in my ADD into the mix right now. I don't have it set up like that but that allows me to do a side cam also. So I can have one camera or the other camera or both on the screen simultaneously. Now when it comes to monitoring audio, normally I have my earbuds in. This way we don't have any kind of echo. They look like this, they get plugged in. I could do a wireless set, but I just, I can't risk losing audio and I can't hear um, whoever I'm talking to on the other side, be it a uh, meeting, like a client meeting, or possibly even doing one of these live broadcasts with someone that we bring on, right? A guest, we wanna be able to hear them. So I'll use something wired. If we're working on um, doing some editing or whatnot, I'm normally listening through these Bose speakers. You probably can't see them. Anyways, I like the Bose monitors. They sound really crisp and clear. I've had other larger monitors that are really good for music and for um, doing vocals, but for just something small that really sound good, these desktop um, Bose monitors are just, they're just awesome. They just sound pristine. So I like those a lot. Now I'm not going to get into the edit side of things because this is more about streaming. If you want to know um, what I use or how I use it, right now I'm using DaVinci Resolve. Um, I can get into that in another video. You just let me know. Anyways, I hope this has been helpful. If there's any questions that you have about anything on the desk or what I do or how I do it, put them in the comment area. I will happily answer any of it, all right? So it doesn't matter, Give, ask me any question. There's no stupid question. Um, so put that down there. There's gonna be other people that might know more than I do. That's the beauty of this channel, all right? I'm not the all-knowing and I just give you all of this fantastic information. Sometimes I'm wrong about things and a lot of times you guys give me some really great ideas and I use them. I never not read a comment and I answer, I would say 99.9% .9 of all comments and that is over the last year and a half. If you go back in the 450 videos and tens of thousands of comments, I've answered all of them, all right? I just make it a point and that's one of the things that I pride myself when it comes to this channel. So once again, I hope you enjoy this. 
If you have any questions, please give them to me. If you enjoy this content or you want other like this, let me know and I will do something similar and get a little bit deeper into it if you want. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe, hit the subscribe button. Also click the little bell notification button somewhere over here so that when I go live or if there is a new video that comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And also, if you have not joined our Creative Discord server as of yet, go to community.jchristina.com. Once again, community.jchristina.com. There is a ton of just amazing people over there that have just great information, no trolls. These people are tech heads, video guys, photo guys, any question that you have, you're gonna find an answer over there, which is awesome. Also, if you haven't downloaded my ebook yet, go over to jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook, 10 tips at making tack sharp images. There's something there for everyone professional, pro-am, or amateur, it doesn't matter, there's something there for you. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. And if you want to help out the channel a little bit, now you can. The YouTube gods gave us the ability to offer up membership. So if you click down here, click join, and you can send the channel a dollar, five dollars, whatever you want per month. I can give you some perks for doing so, which is awesome. In my personal opinion, I love to be able to do that. And it's really super simple. Join, there's a lot of people that are joining already, and I wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. It is very much so helpful. So guys, one last question. What do you think about that idea? Moving over there and doing some retro gaming? I don't know. Maybe we'll put it into a little playlist since this isn't really a retro gaming channel. What do you think? You think it'll be fun? I don't know. Might be cool just to hang out and do that and be able to answer questions like an ask me anything type of thing while I'm playing, right? <laughs> Anyways, let me know what you think. And finally, if you haven't went over to my website as of yet, go check it out over at jchristina.com and you'll find a lot of photography tools that I've invented over the years and hopefully there's something there that you might like and if there is please pick it up and support me and my family that would be awesome also use promo code YT20 at checkout once again YT20 at checkout and you will get 20% off everything in your shopping cart not one thing everything YT20 at checkout so that's it, guys. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.